Race has become a growing matter of concern also here in uh, Europe. Yet we are in a context where race is almost unspoken of. We tend to think of differences in terms of culture, ethnicity, language, or probably even um, uh, religious differences. And at the same time, it is pertinent that we address the issue of race because of the ever-growing dominance of the life sciences and the biologization of differences between individuals and populations. One of the things that we not do uh, take into account when we study race are actually our material surroundings, uh, objects, infrastructure, etc., etc. Not only are we surrounded by these objects from the past, these very objects also transport to the present all kinds of normativities. So can it be that we can find traces of this uh, uh, history of race and racism in our uh, material surroundings. My uh, article tries to speak to that. Uh, in that article, I analyze one very tiny object, not even to be seen by the bare eye, which is uh, a human genome, a mitochondrial genome. Nowadays, it functions as a standardized technology used on a daily basis, and nobody really worries about it anymore. When I was working in the lab, I started to ask questions about it and started to open up uh, its history. This genome was assumed to be Eurocentric. It was done in Britain and it was assumed to be based on a British individual. However, my research into that sequence shows that it was actually based on three individuals. So there is a British individual, there is a black American woman's DNA, also part of the sequence, and there is even DNA from a cow. So the question for us as social scientists is how can we account for the normativity of objects and the way they carry histories with them without falling in the, into the trap of technological determinism or historical determinism? In my analysis of the, this human reference genome, I suggest to view objects as folded objects rather than singular objects. So they gather into, in themselves different places and times, and sometimes unfold this in certain practices. So for example, the reference sequence was really a standard, an invisible standard, one could say, technology in a population genetic context where populations are being compared to one another and studied in terms of historical relationship. Whereas in a medical setting, uh, geneticists were really asking questions about potential mistakes that were on the sequence. And as an effect of that, in the 90s, some geneticists took up the task to resequence the reference sequence and used material that was the original material that were there in the Cambridge laboratory. And um, they, uh, they, they made this analysis and decided to throw out uh, the DNA of the cows, but they've also decided to throw out the d DNA that was stemming from a black American woman. And there was no reason whatsoever to do that because that did not introduce mistakes to the sequence or errors to the sequence as they would call it. But the aim was really to make it to an individual sequence, an individual European sequence. And this is a very, very active moment of purification, one could say. Now, as an irony, the original sequence in the, 90, uh, in the 80s contained an artifact, a mistake. There was an additional C there to be found on the sequence that did not exist neither in the, uh, in the individual on which the sequence was based, nor in any other human individual, in fact. So the C was contained in order to avoid um, mist, uh, 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 chaos and, and, uh, and problems in the sciences because you would have to renumber all the other uh, sequences that have been made ever since the 80s. So the extra C that is in the revised reference sequence is there out of practical reasons. But that C is also political because it reminds us that the revised sequence is not a neutral technology or object, but that it is made and remade in the past. So it reminds us of the history of the sequence, and in particular, as I have analyzed, it reminds us of a history of race and racism.